All right, yeah, I don't know if this one will work. I was just going to kind of do a bunch of segments and either post them individually or stitch them together, but uh, I'm not a big stitch them together type of person. So we'll see if this works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, yeah, I haven't been posting much in um, gameplay stuff. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Even though I've been doing a ton of stuff, most of what I've been doing, though, uh, game-related or whatever, has been um, looking up uh, bits on the rules and um, a ton of journal writing, just doing, which has just been great. Anyway, so one thing that I have been wanting to do, and I, I and I'm glad I have, but it's caused a, well, it's caused a nice, interesting narrative wrinkle, and I don't know if I can get too much into it. We'll see how far I go with this video. But one of the things I wanted to do, and I think I mentioned it before, is I've uh, decided to uh, turn the Earth into 12 uh, what I call conflict zones. And I was like, okay, I'm going to go and take a look at the chronology book and go on Wikipedia and other things and find out what was going on in November 1914 and start putting it on some type of global map and try to con contextualize other things and put things into perspective for me of what's going on. Does it mean that... Um, it, it's going to have a direct impact on my gameplay right off the bat, but it's certainly going to help, like I said, frame things, you know, put things in the right uh, frame of mind for me. So one of the things right, uh, uh, I started getting into was I, knew, I started finding out that there was um, some stuff going on here in the Coronel, uh, Battle of Coronel, and then later on, I think in December, it's going to be the Battle of the Falkland Islands. So I put those troops there, I, sorry, uh, those ships there, and because I think the British have end up, well, they end up winning and have a bigger naval presence, I put uh, a bigger ship there. But you get the idea. So what I'm trying to do is those type of things. And then I found out there's, you know, something going on with the Siege of Sing Tao. I don't know too much about it yet. Uh, yeah, I didn't make a, a, that's just a button with a little red dot that you can get from a stationary store. I didn't realize the, the thing I made was uh, too small for it. So I ended up just using them. Uh, that's a, a marker from a pirate ship game or something. But uh, anyways, you get the idea. So then I started, that's when I went, oh, oh. And I want to do the whole Africa, um, the African conflict zone, there's, I, there's a lot of things i got to add into. But this is the thing. The game is no longer for me, and it never has been. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that because I... Th um, well, yeah, it never has been in because of the narrative thing, but it certainly has taken on, gone on, like, way beyond. I never I didn't expect to go, hey, let's start trying to do the grand campaign. Anyway, so then I find out that it, I just completely forgot about it because I was uh, when I was looking at the Osmanli Harbi... Uh, rules way back when the, that module I just did not notice that um, um, that uh, it just blanked on me that uh, the Brits had already um, hit one well, here we go we'll wander on over to the um, part of the Arabian um, conflict zone which is what I call it uh, I'm just trying to go slowly here so, and then I find out that uh, the Brits had landed to, to protect their oil interests soon right after and uh, sent, uh, it is the Indian Expeditionary Force D, I do believe, were sent over. So anyways, I put these guys in and I'm starting to take a look at the Osmanli Harbi rules and so on and so forth. And so I'm going to, this is being incorporated into my game. Um, and it's going to be, so this is what's going to, it's going to kind of look like for the Brits come January 1915. It's still got a long way to go to figure out all the little bits, but it's starting to work well with my narrative. And that's the other, uh, you know, thing that's being incorporated. Um, and yeah, I'm not going to get too much into this right now. I'll do a separate video, but it, um, uh, what ends up happening is the what I was going to be doing anyways with the non-aggression pact um, with the Russians was, uh, you know, they were going to, uh, the Ottomans were going to start moving some troops, obviously disbanding the Caucasus. I think it's the third army um, away from here and start bringing them towards Mesopotamia and Palestine, which is exactly what's going to happen. And I'm starting to read out about the monster logistical issues they had uh, back, back in the day. And so I've got to incorporate that. So I think, What's going to end up happening is the majority of the forces that uh, the dismantled Third Army uh, is going to end up just being hunkered down in Mosul and then 
come January and I'll, I'll have to figure out how they get transported to Palestine and Mesopotamia, uh, the rest, like down towards um, uh, where the Brits are, uh, towards Baghdad and, and whatnot. So in my world, yes, historically, uh, they've stopped here, though I think they kept on trucking towards Kut, but that didn't get taken, I think, until September 1915. But in my world, uh, yes, the Brits have uh, landed, they've taken Fal, uh, they've taken Basra, um, um, Shir al-Rab or, or something, whatever it's called. Uh, they've got that place and uh, they've also got Kurna. Um, uh, there we go. And they're just going to now start um, basically um, getting that highly defensible. I mean, they've got their the Persian oil um, interests are secured for now, but uh, as per usual, the way that uh, I'm the way the world works is um, they're now uh, got their eyes on Baghdad. I mean, that kind of happened historically anyway. So that's why I'm going to go about it. And the way I'm doing it is the Brits were, um, uh, as I've mentioned, the way I'm doing it is they're hyper aggressive. And we're going to have to get into that later when I start talking about I found out Manry Mike was mentioning. He's like, oh, I got to reply as the Serbian prince. And I was like, holy smokes. And I'm like, yeah, you know what? The same is with Charles of Torah. Uh, being Italy and William Aarons being uh, Greece and I still remember I need somebody for Romania and Bulgaria uh, um, but it's out of my hands in that way they they can decide to do things and I have to like go up like you know deal with it so anyways that this is that's one thing I'm you know that's on my mind and it's uh, yet again because it, uh, this game is just morphed into that and this is just one conflict zone for goodness sakes let's go off to the hold on I can take a quick sip I don't even know if I can post this before work. Doubtful. Anyways, and then we've got the Western Europe conflict zone. Hold on, I'll turn on an extra light. Um, and I've been using these different hex uh, uh, things I got from the dollar store. Like, I'm sorry if I'm um, re rehashing old video stuff. I can't remember what the heck I've mentioned. But uh, so I've you know divided it up. I think I've mentioned before I wanted to turn the, the Western Europe conflict zone into five sectors just for now as another experiment. It's another way of looking at things. It's interesting that um, each conflict zone right now I've got I'm using different uh, mechanisms and perhaps a different scale or or, or whatever. Um, and it doesn't matter yet because nothing has gone into in into play for uh, December. I'm just still looking at other rule systems like fatal alliances. And uh, which has just been really, really interesting. Um, uh, at least the old one. I don't know what the new one's like, but the, the old one is just like I'm like wow. I'm getting a lot of uh, a lot of stuff into my head. So what I did was I took a look at uh, I grabbed all the strength points uh, based on the Second Battle of Artois. I do believe, um, if I remember correctly. Um, and so this would be April 1915, but I'm going to use it for January 1915 for my world in my timeline and then I divided up um, the strength points according if you're going to put it into five sectors and then I also put in the Belgians and the uh, the Brits but now I can start taking a look at uh, you know like I think I'm not sure if I mentioned it but later on uh, like part of the thing is the French for one of their offenses and here's the other thing is another thing I'm looking at is trying to figure out about offensives how that worked um, historically and how can I incorporate that into a into a game affecting demoralization um, uh, when can you call off an offensive? What happens to that? So on and so forth. Oh my gosh, it's just so much fun. But uh, so, anyways, the the French want to uh, get the Brits to uh, take over the spot. But I'm, I'm gonna start looking out. I'm like, now I can start, you know, contextualizing things, seeing things in perspective again, and it's it's really fascinating. I mean, that's a big ask here, um, you know, for the Brits to basically double their front. That's not going to happen. Um, with only 70 strength points sitting out, sitting up there. <clears throat> uh, yeah, the 20 is for that little French uh, unit up there. So, but, you know, if they want to start going towards the Mets offensive, which ironically, I've got to find out this other thing about Mets too that has something to, something important about 1870. Um, Napoleon III and so on and so forth. All these things are going to, well, just anyways. So the, that, there's that bit. And then, of course, there's always my... Like, you know, and like I said, there's the other conflict zones and stuff to figure out. Oh, yeah, let's quickly go over to, it's not the one I'm using, the other, the, the Balkan conflict zone map is upstairs, but this is the uh, smaller scale, so I can get a larger area. But uh, this is effectively what I think was going on in November, I've mentioned that before. And then we've got, um, that's where the Austrian, 
uh, Serbian frontiers and you know still have the Battle of Kolobara that's gonna happen uh, historically it's gonna happen in my timeline so and then just after at the end of de December I mean November whatever basically is there you know freeze it and then go into January like I've mentioned before and then you know um, figure out what's going on with the hyper aggressive Brits and all this stuff and then there's um, hold on here where are you are you around here or did I get rid of you it looks like I got rid of you. The Enver, the Emergency uh, Measures um, Vessel um, Registry um, thing by the Brits. And then I've got uh, uh, the World Independent News I've been working on. And, you know, all these things that are, uh, yeah, it's all part of it. So let's go back to my beautiful little uh, lovely world. And, uh, yep, been uh, just working on the Ninth Army and the Fourth Army movements and so on and so forth. But, uh, yep. Uh, doing that bit and hopefully find out uh, yeah like I said it's just it's just it's just an ongoing ongoing thing so there we go all right see you later hope you have a we're having a good time and hope you have a great week